Is there anything better in life than watching an incredulous flat earther in his work van shouting nonsense for 10 minutes? Quite simply, no. And that's precisely what we're going to do today as we take another trip back to Westchester County, New York to see someone that I am now calling the People's Flat Earther. Hello all and welcome along to another video with me, Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a massive thank you to the sponsors of this video, Curiosity Box. Curiosity Box is a premium science-themed subscription box curated by actual real scientists and it's designed to ignite intellectual curiosity and lifelong learning. Now, it's brought to you by the team behind Vsauce, who has been a massive inspiration to me, to be honest. Now, each box includes a thoughtfully assembled collection of puzzles, experiments, gadgets, and STEAM-related content designed for adults who love to learn and think differently. Now, this is the new box. Now, I'm not gonna give all the contents away, but here are a couple of awesome inclusions. A four-dimensional tape measure. Love this thing. Not only can you measure distance with this, but also time. You just set it to the time you want to measure, hang it from the side, and the period of the pendulum will be the time you set. How cool is that? Oh, and how about this t-shirt? It's all about different kinds of time travel from books, TV shows, and movies. This is going in my rotation, that's for sure. Curiosity Box is the perfect gift for the curious friend or family member in your life, or you can just use it for your own personal discovery. Either way, you can get 25% off your first Curiosity Box. Just click the link in the description below and enjoy the curiosity. Okay, on with today's video then, which comes from CC, Chris from New York, Westchester County. He starts his video, as always, with a rant, this time about how we're all preconditioned from birth to believe we live on a ball. And we join him from there. Here we go. Now you can watch movies, you can have the conditioning work further, you can watch NASA, you can watch all these fake rockets go up and turn. They don't really quite let you see them turn because they blast them off above the clouds but that's what they do. And they crash land somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean or wherever ocean they're by, that's where they crash land. Unless of course they're reusable boosters and they land back on the launch pad. And oh, the Bermuda Triangle, like, don't you love that? You know, they just invented this Bermuda Triangle out of nowhere and says that a few ships sank here and, and other things. No, that's where they crash land, the, the rockets somewhere around there. And it's uh, cordoned off just like, that's right. You can watch hundreds of amateur videos on rockets, climbing, turning, reaching orbit. There's even independent trackers showing exact orbital positions in real time. And that bit about the Bermuda Triangle? Total nonsense. The myth existed long before the space age. Rockets often drop boosters into designated recovery zones in the Atlantic. Some are even landed on camera by SpaceX. Nothing mysterious, just smart engineering and planned splashdowns. Antarctica, cordoned off. All the wars are going on, everybody's shooting each other, they're all fighting each other, they're all fighting over land, they're all fighting over guns, they're all fighting over religion, but there's one thing that nobody is fighting over and that is Antarctica. That's right. Yes, many countries have signed a treaty. Every corporation signed a treaty. You may not go down there, investigate. You may not walk around there on your free will. You understood I said that, free will, okay? You cannot go down there with a plane of your own. You can't go down there with choppers or snowmobiles under free will, okay? No, you cannot go down there. Why? Um, you can go there. You just need permission so you don't wreck one of the last untouched ecosystems on Earth. Every year, thousands of tourists visit Antarctica on ships or planes. Scientists from over 50 nations live and work on research stations there. People run marathons and film documentaries and fly sightseeing tours, all perfectly legal. And as far as you can't fly your own plane, well, yes, that is correct. But not because of some grand cover-up. It's because it's the most remote, dangerous place on Earth. With no infrastructure, no proper runways, and no rescue options. Aviation authorities regulate it for safety, not secrecy. Why is that, you ask? To save the penguins, to save the bears. That's right. 
That's why you can't go down there. There are no bears, CC, in Antarctica. That's literally the name of the continent, Antarcticus. No bears. Okay. Well, if you believe that one, once again, I have some swamp land in Florida uh, that I'd like to sell you for uh, a reasonable price. Um, okay. Well, you know, here we are once again. And and why? And, and people are, are, you know, when you bring up flat Earth to, to people, and, and they start at they they start telling you about you know planets and, and all this stuff that they they manage to see these things in, in, in the telescope um, and and that's great that that's wonderful okay but the problem is you don't know what a planet looks like I don't know what a planet looks like because I've never seen one I've seen something through a telescope that resembles partially what a planet should look like but that's a light in the sky that's all that is and that's the same for you uh, nope, I've seen several planets in my telescope, all properly focused. They look like they should do, not fuzzy messes on the screen. You've never seen a star, so you have no comparison. You have nothing to compare it to. All you see is this circular yellow thing in the sky that you call a star, that you call something that's 93 million miles away, okay, that you think it's in space because you've been told that. All right, you have been told that. Now, using spectroscopy, we can split sunlight and starlight into color bands, and that reveals identical elements, hydrogen, helium, oxygen, so on. The sun's composition matches other stars almost perfectly, which is how we know they're the same kind of object. Now, unless you want to try and debunk the entire science of spectroscopy, then I suggest you're gonna to have to accept that. So nobody knows what anything should look like at all. The only thing we know and many other things, okay, is that we live on a flat land, we're covered with something, something's containing our gases, a dome of some sort, if you wish to call that, a stadium perhaps, who knows how big this thing is, who knows how tall it is, you know, that GoPro rocket that they shot up there, um, there could be another barrier with the dome itself. There could be some other barrier also preventing any rockets from getting through. Listen to how many coulds he throws out there. There could be a dome. There could be another barrier. There could be something stopping rockets. Science doesn't deal in coulds without data. We test, we measure, we verify. Flat earthers just keep stacking maybes until it sounds profound. But saying it could be isn't proof, it's admitting you don't know. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows what exactly and where it is and where it starts and how far it is, I mean, how big it is, what the length of it is. We don't know these things, but we do know one thing is that we do not live on a spinning wet ball. We do not live in space traveling at millions of miles, hundreds of thousands of miles per hour and, and, and going around the sun and following it, corkscrewing through, through space. We're not doing any of that. That's from the Flat Earth playbook in one breath. Admit total ignorance, then immediately claim absolute certainty. So when CC says, who knows, whilst ignoring centuries of measurable evidence, what they really mean is, I don't know, and I'd like you not to know as well. Okay, when people fight it, they don't know because they've never witnessed it. You're, you're not witnessing anything, but just feeling like you're not moving at all. I, th that's it. That's that's all. They might want to give you examples of why you're not moving. They want to, might want to give you examples of the Coriolis effect that it doesn't exist because it doesn't, and there's not a single sharpshooter out there that it, that takes in account of an, any Coriolis effect, of Coriolis at all, whatsoever. Army doesn't even acknowledge it. CC says the army doesn't even acknowledge the Coriolis effect. Now this is from an official sniper training handbook. The Coriolis effect can cause either a vertical or horizontal shift in POI or a combination of the two depending on the DOF and the rotation of the earth underneath the bullet while in flight. You're wrong CC I'm afraid. Planes coming down, pilots don't acknowledge anything moving below them. All the games have a flat stationary uh, program that keeps earth flat and stationary so you can land that flight simulation thing right onto the ground. It's not moving. There's nothing moving on the weather channel at all. No land is moving. The only thing that's moving are the clouds. That's it. Sometimes they go erratic. They're coming from all sides. I love that when that happens. 
Real pilots do acknowledge the Earth's rotation, they just don't need to dip the nose or adjust for spin. Because flight plasts are calculating with Earth's rotating reference frame. Everything, atmospheres, runways, planes, is moving together. So there's no need for constant correction. As for nothing moves on the weather channel, that's because those are map projections. Static background images used for clarity, not scientific models of the rotating globe. The clouds move because they're dynamic. The map doesn't need to spin for you to know which way the wind is blowing. And that's where we're going to end this trip to Westchester County for today's video. And we'll leave CC chatting away to his phone in disbelief about the world. Please do let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video as I wrap it up and say we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching today. It's very much appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button too. Just enough time to once again thank Curiosity Box for sponsoring today's video. Remember to get 25% off your first purchase of a Curiosity Box. Click the link in the description. Thanks again to them for sponsoring. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for the Super Atheist Team. See you then.